right, so Bill here, we're in a, um, in a car driving from Santa Cruz down to Watsonville to go visit an aquaponics place. I'm here with my family. There's my kid, my mom, that's my dad. Um, what's the name of the place we're going to? Do you know, Dad? Veritas. Veritas. Veritas? Okay, Veritas Aquaponics. It's run by Drew... Well, I'm Drew Hopkins, and I don't know the other fellows. Too. Okay, Drew Hopkins. So we're going to meet up with Drew Hopkins. And Miles, do you know what aquaponics is? No? Okay, well, I think you're going to find out. All right, see y'all. My name is uh, Curtis White, and um, started here with the Veritas Project from day one. Fantastic. Uh, I'm Nate Kaufman, and I do education and outreach here at Veritas. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, uh, let's take a look. Cool. Awesome. What is protection? <laughs> really, everything starts over here with the fish tank. Uh, it's a nice, like, 600-gallon tank. We've got, you know, uh, white Pacific sturgeon in here. Try and wrangle one up. Oh go, my goodness, Miles. whoa! <laughs> yeah. So, these guys are about eight months old. Okay. And, uh, you know, they'll get to be, a, we'll sell them <laughs> off when they're about 30 to 50 pounds each. Okay. Uh, you know, to be harvested for their meat. Okay. Uh, but for now, they basically, we feed them and they metabolize that food. And as they uh, metabolize that, you know, they excrete waste. Uh, pretty much they poop. They poop. You know, <laughs> they're, they're in there. They're pooping up a storm. Uh, and basically, you know, fish excrete about 80% pure liquid, uh, pure liquid ammonia. Uh, and then the rest comes out as a solid. And that's really what has all your sulfur, potassium, magnesium, and everything. Uh, so once it, so basic, you know, they excrete all their, uh, their waste in here. And then it hits a series, these two barrels, where, which are a series of biological filtration. Basically, these are designed to catch any solids, give them a place to be broken down uh, by bacterial processes. Uh, we rely on what are called nitrifying bacteria. Uh, so a couple classes, nitrosominus and nitrobacter bacteria, uh, that actually convert the uh, ammonia in, uh, that the fish produce. They convert it first to nitrites and then into nitrates. Okay. Uh, so... Both ammonia and nitrites are really toxic to fish, uh, so that's why in a conventional aquaculture system, essentially you have a pond, and when it starts to go foul, you simply drain off half the water and refill it with pure water. Uh, in an aquaponic system, we never drain that water off. We simply have bacteria that you know convert the ammonia and nitrite into a bioavailable form of nitrogen for plants, and then as those plants actually absorb the nitrates, they remove it from the water and clean it for the fish. Okay. Uh, so after after it's Basically, after it hits these two uh, filtration barrels, uh, the water passes through what's called a wicking bed. So uh, if you can imagine, the, the water is passing through these beds, uh, actually only to about right here. Uh, okay. So below that, it's just, you know, uh, gravel. And above that, it's a layer of soil. Okay. If you can imagine, the water line is right at the base of the soil, so that it's just kissing the b bottom of the soil. And then if you've ever, you know, dipped a paper towel into, into water and you see it wick its way right, up. Right. You know, we, we utilize the capillary action uh, to maintain a constant level of moisture in our soil. So even just an inch down, it's nice and moist and cool, but it's not wet. It's The soil's never uh, saturated. Uh, so we don't have, you know, so it's ideal for root vegetables, uh, carrots, beets, onions, garlic, uh, things that would be really susceptible to an excess uh, of water or if they were ever waterlogged. Uh, great for peppers. I mean, obviously we've got chard and kale that are just doing great. Um, but then, it, so it'll go through the wick bed, and at the end, it'll actually underground. We have it piped over into our. These are what are called uh, deep water culture beds. Uh, so this is our primary growing method here. It's a basically it's about a one deep, one foot deep channel of water, uh, four feet wide, um, and we grow directly into these floating rafts. Yes. The roots just uh, absorb oh, cool. the, the roots just dangle, yeah, straight into the water. Uh, you know, it also makes the ease of harvest, transplant, seeding, you know, really easy. We seed directly into these plugs, and when they have roots that start to protrude, we'll actually just pop it right in, just like that. You know, essentially, there's no no transplant shock. Uh, you know, no no uh, lapse. You know. Uh, in growth. Okay, really. cool. Uh, it also allows us to have seeding and transplanting be like a one, two person job instead of an entire operation. Okay. Um, okay, we need to do the test. Hey, Miles, how's their basil? Is it fantastic? <laughs> 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 you, you want a second bite? 
says it's Is really it good enough for a second? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, do you um, use any IT systems to to support this, or is it like like how do you know when the chemical composition of the water is right or whatever? Or is that like dipping a stick in? How do you? Yeah, so we have a we have electronic monitors for for everything here. It's right now it's all it's all manually done. Okay. Uh, just you know every day once a day with electronic testing, and then once a week with reagent based testing, just to double check that our electronics probes are okay. still functioning as they should. Uh, but all the uh, temperature controls and everything here in the greenhouse. Uh, that's all run by a computer, uh, so essentially, you know, as soon as it hits 78 degrees in here, the roof vents will open. As soon as it gets below that, they'll close. Uh, so the entire day, it's really, you know, they're opening, they're closing. It'll actually be totally independent, you know, because that side of the greenhouse gets hit with the sunlight much earlier in the morning than this side, so it'll usually uh, heat up a lot faster. Um, but when, when I was a little kid, man, first sign of a sore throat or a cough, mom would whisk us off to the doctor for a shot in the bum of antibiotics. Right? Yeah. Nowadays, we know that we need some of this biology that's inside us to help us digest our meals and, and uh, our immune system, our immune function. Some of that is biology that's on us. And if we kill everything, we become immediate host to all kinds of other things if we, have, if we lose all our protection. The same thing happens with this system. Instead of sterilizing our system all the time, which makes it susceptible for all kinds of new residents, we nurture the biology. So we're looking forward to this water becoming older and older and older because things show up in there that are beneficial. And that's what we're nurturing is beneficial bacteria. So that's why we drink kombucha and probiotics and all those things are part of the age today where we start to respect the help the helpful biologies. I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Our neighbors here in this valley, which is the most abundant valley in America, the Salad Bowl, Salinas Valley, is where 95% of the lettuce in America comes from. Third generation farmers here will tell you that they grow a head of lettuce per square foot two times a year. You know, they turn their crops once, twice, and then winter's here again. Two heads of lettuce per square foot per year compared to our 60 per square foot per year. Wow. So inside this 10 acres, we grow a million heads of lettuce a month. To do that out there requires 450 acres once. Wow. When you consider the amount of water that's going on that mud as those seeds are taking hold, the amount of tractors that are tilling that land, the harvesters that are breaking their backs down low, the pesticides, the fertilizers, everything, none of which we use in here. Look, there's no dirt, there's no furrows, there's no sprinklers. We use 99% less water than they do because ours is all preserved. And we have hundreds of times the yield. This is the agriculture of the future. So one thing I, I asked your colleagues, but I, I was wondering on your thoughts on it as well, and, and if you guys have other thoughts on it, since, since the course is focusing on information technology, um, they were mentioning to me a couple of the ways that IT features into the system as you currently have it. Do you have a sense for how might information technology be used over the next 10 or 20 years in an endeavor like this? Oh, man, dramatically. Uh, one of the fortunate things we're looking at is we, we caught the eye of NASA, the Ames Research Center, has offered us something called the Space Act Agreement, where we will have a co-collaborative effort in the sciences. They want to study the nitrification process and the, the feasibility of growing food in space for the space station and further exploration, as well as just humanity on Earth. We have a great deal of impact happening in agriculture. So NASA is putting 14 scientists in a laboratory here on this site to perform data collection and study why this is working so well. That science will be shared by us and them. What we're looking forward to immediately in information technology is a way to test our water and the production, production cycles, the nitrification processes, uh, what happens to the mineralization of elements in the soils, being able to be uptaken by plants, uh, the oxygen levels, the dissolved oxygen in the tank, the pH levels in the tank. There's so many things that we need to test for. And we have dramatic, massive, ca catastrophic failures when that occurs. We have an acre of water here, and if chemically something happens, we lose a massive crop 
So we have to monitor consistently. That monitoring needs to happen minute by minute, wirelessly, and be sent to our phones. And this is Viridis One of thousands. We're going to put these thousands of these all over the world. We need this modernized and wired. So in this house, we re you know we really have our charred kale, pukes, uh, uh, substantial amount of tomatoes uh, in production. Uh, mostly Cherokee purple and a few other uh, heirloom varieties. Yeah, it was kind of cool. At the time, these, these stocks will actually spiral okay. around these buckets because they grow so long. So it, it's kind of like uh, weaving almost. You can, you can totally yeah, you can make to art out of tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, we've got going on here. Yeah, yeah. Where they're braided together. These, you know, these are all indeterminate tomatoes. They'll essentially, as long as they have the right conditions, they'll keep growing keep and growing. keep growing and keep growing. So, you know, we'll we'll let these get you know to be like 25, even 50 feet long before before they'll really start to have a di diminishment in the amount of fruit set. Wow. Yeah. Big tomatoes. I, I I only come down a few days a week, and these were transplanted two weeks ago. Uh, the, these cucumbers, they were maybe now they're producing fruit. six to eight inches tall each, and now they're well over a foot and a half, two feet tall each. They're wow. actually producing cucumbers. Um, so really just an idea of like this, the, the rapid growth that we experience. Yeah, yeah. Farm. We're beyond organic. Organic has 226 different pesticides that are approved for use on organic produce. We didn't want to stoop to that. We, ha we can use none. Everything in our system has to be digestible. We have to be able to feed that to our kids to spray it on our plants because otherwise it'll kill the fish or the bacteria, which must be protected. So we can use none fertilizers. UC Santa Cruz, Hippie College of California and the growers of the world <laughs> understand what we're talking about and uh, they were pretty enthused about our products. So it didn't take but two tours from the procurement department and then the entire dining staff, which 20 more will be here tonight on a tour, they gave us a beautiful food purchasing contract for thousands of dollars and asked us to su supply all of the lettuce, tomatoes, any specialty goods, anything we grow. We're first in line now at UC Santa Cruz over the food service contract. Nice. Now we've been contacted by the office of the president of the UC Association and are looking at, at, a, at a similar contract for the entire UC network wow. to be able to provide this beautiful food to all the students of the UC. Awesome.